Friday. Welcome. I hope that you don't uh, infer from these uh, first couple of class meetings that data structures is all about huddling in a dark basement thinking about Java syntax. So there's more exciting stuff going on uh, than that. So start off, uh, are there any questions on stuff from Wednesday? Anything about the, the course that I can answer? I yes. had a question from last week about the primitive data types when we said the operation or operator. Why wouldn't we use like the equal signs? But I think we did that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that is uh, an important point uh, because uh, if we're used to thinking in Python, Python's secret is that everything, every kind of value that you ever encounter in a Python program is an object. Um, numbers are objects, strings are objects, uh, booleans are objects. In Java, there is a distinction. Some things are objects, some things are not. And we have we have primitives, which are a certain set of things. Uh, int, long, float, double, char for a single character, and boolean. And they're all, they all start with lowercase. And these are the primitive types. Everything else is an object, anything that's not one of these primitive types. And <clears throat> when we have the double equals operator, this asks, we have A and B, two variables or, or kind of just two expressions of some uh, a number or a string or whatever it is, on either side, this asks or checks are A and B exactly the same thing? And A dot equals B checks is probably better, checks are A and B equivalent. So they could be two different pieces of data, and this is checking, are they equivalent? Do they have the same letters in the string, for example? And so the tricky thing is that when we do this with objects, what we're asking is do A and B refer to exactly the same object? So if we have a string, that's an object, it's somewhere in the computer's memory. And if we have that string equals equals something else, we're saying this is other thing, this specific string at this specific spot in the computer's memory. And so even if they have all the same letters, if they're two strings in two different spots, they're not exactly the same thing, which is what this double equals checks. And the reason, and, and so we want usually to check, are they equivalent? Now, whenever we see dot followed by uh, a, a term, uh, does anyone uh, know what that's, what, the, what that's called, the terminology for that? Okay. Exactly. That this equals, it's a function, and it's associated with some object, which makes it a method. And we're going to go through a bunch of object-oriented terminology uh, today and, and Monday to get us set up to 
uh, work with objects uh, in detail. And we can only, only use methods with objects. Primitives aren't objects, so primitives don't have, we can't use dot equals with primitives and can only use the double equals. Does that make sense? Questions on this? All right, so the way this will work is I'll put up a multiple choice question, such as this one. I have three uh, Java statements, uh, each uh, uh, declaring a new variable. Forgot the semicolon on the last one. That was unintentional. And I'm asking you to fill in what the three types in front of these variable names should be. And these cards you're holding, each of the sides has a letter on it. And so you will indicate your answer by holding up the card with the letter that you uh, have selected at the top of the card. Uh, so take a moment and uh, think about uh, what types you would use for these three statements. Uh, when you feel like you're ready to answer or take your best guess, uh, raise your card so I know where we're at. All right, so here's how we're thinking, mostly C or D. So I ask you to uh, discuss with your neighbors why you chose uh, the one you did. All right, we had a big movement towards C, that's great. Uh, Boolean string string. Uh, someone uh, who, uh, who changed your mind from D to C want to share what? What led you to decide that that third one was a string and not a char? Yeah. Um, Jeffrey reminded me that a character would be represented in single quotes instead of double quotes like a string. Exactly. That if we have single quotes, that's a character. Double quotes, that's a string. That makes sense? Questions on that? All right, a bit more practice with types, three new variables, three new values. Think about what types we'd use for these. So again, we're thinking probably C or D, please discuss. These are pretty similar. So it's just this last, this uh, variable F. So uh, please discuss with your neighbors about the difference between an int and a long and how we might think about which to use. All right, still majority on C, but in fact, we'll have to use a long. Does anyone remember what the difference between int and long is? Yeah. Yeah, an int uses less data and has a maximum value that's much smaller than a long. And one handy thing, uh, one thing that comes up a lot in computer science that's use the rule of thumb, uh, two to the tenth is about 1,000. Two to the twentieth is about 1 million. Two to the thirtieth, about 1 billion. And so two to the 31st, two times about 1 billion, it's 2 billion in sum, 100 billion is not going not gonna to fit. So in this case, we, we'd have to lose, use a long. This is deliberately tricky to get us, to remind us that we have these, these two different types. Yes? Why might you use an int or a long versus a quote or a double? So that, that's a good question. When do we want to use an int versus a float or a double? 
Uh, in general, we want to use an intor long when the number were when whatever we're representing with this number should only have integer values. So for example, if we were counting the number of people, we're counting whole people. If we're counting, uh, however, if we wanted to find the average number of people, that might have some fractional components, and that would need to be a float or, or a double. So int, uh, what's going on, very briefly what's going on underneath, is that the computer is more efficient, can do operations with integers faster. It takes less work than to do them with floats and doubles. So when we're writing computer code in a situation where we need to care about how fast the program runs, which is not all situations, but in those situations, then we want to think, okay, what can we want things to be integers when we can, and then if we need them to be able to have decimal points, then then use the floater double. Does that make sense? Other questions about that? All right. So what I'd like for us to do now is uh, to look at some more uh, some more Java uh, syntax. And so to do this, I was just talking about uh, computing the average of, of something. And so if I were to, in my thinking in my uh, kind of calculator class that I was uh, working on in VS Code uh, uh, last time, let's say that I wanted to implement uh, a function to compute the average of uh, some, some list of numbers. So one, uh, uh, one thing that's going to be different than Python is how we represent what the type of a list of numbers is. And as we'll see throughout the course, there's actually a number of different ways that we can do this in Java. Uh, and I would say kind of the, the basic way to do it is with what's called an array. And we would write this as we have an array of integers. And I'll call this nums. So what we have going on here is when I'm writing down the type of an array, I write down the type of thing that's in the array. So my array is going to be a list of uh, of individual elements. And then I put square brackets after it to indicate that it is an array of, in this case, ints. And then I give the variable a name, nums. So when I'm computing, uh, when I'm running code to compute the average of something, uh, maybe it's the, the average of, uh, it's the average of this array of integers. Uh, can someone uh, sketch out and, and uh, kind of 
at a high level an algorithm that I could use to compute the average of, say, a list of numbers? I still thinking, but I guess you could make a for loop that would go into each number and have a pointer that goes on after each time the loop runs, and then add it to another variable that would then divide by the list. Minus one? Wait, yeah, wait, no, plus one. Yeah, the length of the list plus one. Yeah, so that's exactly the, the approach we want to take. We'll have some. variable that I'll call total because we want to add up all the numbers uh, in our array. We'll start that at zero. And we need some sort of like finger or pointer to keep track of kind of which number we're on as we add them up. And so I might also have an index into my array that I'm going to start at zero. And then some sort of loop. And to start out with, I'm going to choose to use a while loop. And you might remember that while uh, expects some sort of true or false, some sort of Boolean that determines whether we continue going around the loop. And if I want to go through all the numbers in this list, and index is keeping track of which number which spot of my array I'm on. Uh, anyone have a suggestion for what the condition for my while should be? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, index does not equal uh, length Yeah, exactly. Well, our index is, it hasn't reached the end of, of our, our numbers. Uh, we could use not equal or, or less than, either would work. So while well, index does not equal, and in Python, we'd use that uh, len function of our list to get how many things are in it. In Java, when we're dealing with an array, we would say that array dot length. It's going to tell us how many things are in the array. Inside this loop, I can say total plus total equals total plus nums bracket index, which is going to give me the number in the array corresponding to that index. Yes? Yeah, two plus equals in Java. Uh, yes, yeah, so you may have noticed I started writing total plus equals. Uh, both uh, Java and Python let you do this. So I could shorten this instead of saying total equals total plus nums. Java gives me the shortcut of total plus equals nums, which means exactly the same thing that I had before. Take the current value of total, add it to whatever's over here, and assign the result back to the same variable. Does this make sense? Questions so far? Anything else I need to do inside my while loop? Yeah. Increase index. Yes, I need to increase the index, move to the next uh, uh, index in my array. Here we can do something uh, that's very popular among computer scientists because it takes very few key presses, and computer scientists love pressing as few keys as possible, uh, which is to say index plus plus, which just says add one to the current value of index. So it's like I wrote index equals index plus one or index plus equals one. You can do it even shorter and say index plus plus. All right, so am I done with my function? Have I computed the average? Yeah, so the, the step left is to uh, take our 
total divided by the number of elements that we're, we're averaging. So total divided by nums.length. And then if I want to have a value like leave a function be useful outside of a, outside of a function, anyone remember what I need to use to do that? Yeah. Return. Yes, I need a return statement uh, to say both end the function and take the value and make that the return value. So I have a blank here because whenever I define uh, a method uh, in Java, I both need to write down the type of any parameters and the type that the method returns. So I haven't written down what type this method returns. I'd like you to take a minute and discuss with your neighbors what the return type of this average method should be. Yeah. Would it be double? Could be double. Why are you thinking double? Uh, just because doubles are, they're not integers, they have decimals, and then they're, uh, they have like more space, like they're more inclusive. Yeah, I think that's, that's sound reasoning, that an average, not necessarily going to be a, a whole number, an integer, so return type should, should probably reflect that. So yeah, I, I like double. Um, however, I think the compiler is going to uh, perhaps complain about this method. Uh, it's going to complain that, that a couple of types don't match, or at least I hope that it would, because there indeed is a, is a type mismatch here. Anyone have a guess as to what that is? Yeah. When you combine in Java with two hints, it'll always spit out an int that you would have to have if it would have a decimal if you're doing the math yourself. Yes, absolutely. Our total, I made it an integer. The length of an array, always an integer. And when we do division, unlike Python, it keeps it as either an integer or as uh, a floating point number, a, a double. And so this is going to be an integer, which is going to be a problem since we're saying that it returns a double, but it's also a problem because this is written, if I had it compute the average of, say, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 would be 10 divided by 4, and Java would be like, well, that's 2. Because it would do the division, and then since the result is an integer, it would just throw away the 0.5 that should be there. So there are different ways that we might go about fixing this, but I think the simplest is to make our total a double as well. And so then when we do this division here at the bottom, we are dividing a double by an integer, and Java will uh, treat that result as a double, and we get 2.5 uh, if in this example. What are your questions on this? Yes. So you might have already explained this, but uh, so you change the total to double, but the index can still stay as an integer? Uh, that's correct. And in fact, the index must stay as an integer. Uh, Java will not let you use something that's not an integer as an index because our indexes are always 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And so the compiler will, will not allow you to use anything that's not an int or a long um, or, or a char. Those are technically, uh, technically an integer type. One of, you'll have one of those, but usually int would be, would be the index. Other questions? few things to know about the array. 
and its uh, differences from the Python list. Arrays are fixed size, which means that when we create an array, it has a certain number of slots in it, and that can't change. So what would that what would that look like? Well, we could say int bracket nums equals new int bracket 10. And this is the first time we're seeing this special uh, term new in Java. And this is going to come up any time we're creating a new object. And arrays are a kind of object. So any time we want to create a new object, we're going to need to use the word new. And we'll see how that's used with other objects. Arrays have this particular syntax where, as part of making a new array, we tell it how many spots to put in that array. In addition to being fixed size, Arrays can only contain a single type of element, which means all the things in the array have, are the same type. So it's either all ints or all strings or all doubles. We can't have a string and a double together in the, in the same array. All right. Questions on this? OK, that must mean that it's time for some presidential facts. So last time it was Martin Van Buren. Uh, he ran for re-election, but as I mentioned, very unpopular. Lost to uh, this man, William Henry Harrison. Uh, William Henry Harrison. Uh, continues uh, what was becoming an American tradition of, uh, uh, at that point of electing uh, military generals as presidents. Uh, the country had George Washington and Andrew Jackson and now William Henry Harrison. And uh, he proceeded to give the longest inaugural address in US history, uh, uh, despite it being edited by, by a colleague, still incredibly long. Uh, the weather that day was very cold and, and damp, and this may have contributed to the fact that uh, Harrison is uh, holds the record for the shortest term in office, because three weeks after taking office, he got sick and died a week later. So he served for an entirety of one month. Uh, this created significant uh, confusion because it turns out the Constitution was not clear about what happened when the president died. Uh, this hadn't happened before. And the Constitution said the vice president assumes the duties of the president. But it doesn't actually say, does the vice president become the president or just do what the president, or just do the president's job, but they're still the vice president. And so on Monday, we'll, we'll talk about John Tyler, the vice president this time, and how that worked out. Uh, in the campaign of, of 1840, uh, Harrison's opponents tried to criticize him as kind of a, a backwards uh, woodsman uh, sitting in his log cabin drinking hard cider. Uh, but the campaign embraced this, an image of, of the common man. And they towed log cabins to political events and passed out hard cider. Uh, and you can see uh, some of that here in this campaign poster, Log Cabin, the Patriot's Home. Uh, playing heavily on, on uh, his, his military record. His nickname was Old Tippy Canoe, because he won, a bat he won the Battle of Tippy Canoe. Uh, but also continuing a theme from, from this time, that battle was against Native Americans, again, the US Army, forcing people from their land. So 
notable for, for short term in office um, and one of the country's few presidents from the Whig Party, W-H-I-G. No longer, no longer exists, of course. All right, that was our, our presidential interlude. Uh, now I would like to talk about uh, the lab assignment that is out today. So I look on the calendar, I see Lab Zero, Hello Java is out. Uh, and there are two parts to this lab. Uh, one is a kind of uh, tutorial getting set up uh, to work with Java on your own computer. Uh, you can also work on uh, the lab computers on the third floor of Olin, Olin 310, 304, and 308 are all computer labs. And everything that this lab uh, tells you to install, that's already installed on those computers. So you can uh, skip those steps. The server is being a bit slow, but the second part, as I mentioned on Wednesday, is going to be uh, drawing a picture. I think the requirement is the picture has to have uh, at least three shapes in it. Um, and just pull up the not internet version. That one. That one. All right. So there's this. So I said, and then drawing a picture. So there's a uh, handout uh, that comes with this lab, and it will come with with all the labs. Uh, and it is a uh, zip file. So if I download lab zero dash handout dot zip on Mac, I can uh, uh, click on it and it will unzip it into a, a folder that contains uh, lib and this starter code my drawing dot Java. If I go to Visual Studio Code, open up a new window and then go to File, Open Folder. To work on the labs, I always want to open the folder that contains this lib directory. And then it will uh, uh, take a little while to sort of activate all the, the Java stuff going on inside VS Code. Let me uh, make the text bigger. And so to make the drawing, you'll be using this standard draw that uh, uh, provided by this algs4 library. And that's what this algs4.jar is uh, doing in the, in the lib folder over here. And so if I just run the starting code, it will uh, pop up a Java window with the circle in it. And so your uh, task is to replace this with some code that draws a simple picture. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, there is a documentation and examples for this standard draw linked from uh, this page. So it describes you can make points, lines, circles, squares, rectangles, fill them in. A um, lot of detail here. You don't need to, to, as I said, make anything fancy, just play around, draw a simple picture. And uh, that is all that uh, is, is expected for this lab. And then you'll turn in the mydrawing.java uh, on Moodle. Uh, one thing to be careful about, and this is particularly easy to do on Windows because of how it unzips files, uh, Windows often uh, will, by default, unzip uh, uh, the handout in a structure like this, where uh, 
there's a lab handout folder, and then inside that, there is a lab zero handout folder, and inside that is the lib and the mydrawing.java. And if I open this outer folder, did I not just change that? I did, okay. If I open this outer folder and I see something that is like, I have lab handout and then inside that lab handout and inside that this lib, I am going to get an error message when it tries to compile my code that it can't find standard draw that this import can't be resolved. And that's because it only knows how to look for it if I have, if I specifically open the folder that contains the lib folder. So there are pictures of exactly what you want this sidebar over here to look like. There's the picture of what we want and the picture of the Java compiler is going to be sad. So just something to pay attention to as you start on that part of the lab. Uh, what are your questions on, on this? Yes, yeah, not necessarily on this, but I know that in Python there was a Python tutor. Uh, tutor. Is there something similar for Java? Great question. Uh, PythonTutor.com, you may be familiar with that. Uh, that has, as part of its many services, a Java tutor. So you can, in fact, uh, put some code into the editor and uh, they have some examples. So here's something that has a while loop and some if statements. Uh, and if I click visualize, um, it will present to me a sort of step-by-step -step diagram of everything that the code is doing, what the variables are, show me what line is executing. So this can be a way to put some Java code in there and have it sort of show you what, what's going on. That's pythontutor.com, and then there's a link to the Java thing within there. Other questions? All right, that will do it for today. A reminder that there are lab assistants in Olin 310. For any of your, your Java and data structures questions, this, their schedule is linked uh, from the web page. Quark's an, an excellent resource. And uh, have a good weekend. I'll see you Monday.